Hey everybody, today I've got six landscape painting and drawing ideas for you. For the first one, I am going to use my Kuretake Art Nouveau set again. I really wanted to give this a second chance. I did a review of it a few weeks back. I was not the happiest with it, I have to admit, because they didn't really work well with any sort of line art that I tried on top of them. But this time I wanted to try a little bit of a different approach, a little bit of a more casual mixed media. So the first two landscapes that you will see in this video actually that I did in this sketchbook here are probably the simplest. Yeah, they're definitely the simplest of this video. So these are the more beginner friendly ones, the more casual warm up type of art pieces, but I still really like them. I still think that they have a really nice impact to them. And I worked on both of those simultaneously. For the other ideas that I'm going to show you, I did one at a time, but here it worked out really well to do two at a time because we have this sketchbook page spread here. And while the one on the right side is drying right now, you can see that I already started the one on the left side. And I just wanted the first layer to look very playful. I mean, the entire pieces are going to be on the playful side. But I want it to be very loose here, do a lot of wet on wet. While this is not the number one sketchbook that I would use for wet on wet, I think that it worked out pretty well. This is a gray tone sketchbook from Hanemühle. So you will see now I am adding Neo Colors, Neo Color 2s actually, and I am adding white in some areas and you can kind of see in certain areas that the color of the paper is gray. So you can see, especially here on the outline, a little bit, but I did reinforce that with a colored pencil. So we can see the outline a bit better, but you can kind of see the white on top of the gray just a little bit. It is a very light color, but I really like this sketchbook. I really liked it for this double page as well, especially because it worked really well with this mixed media approach with the new colors because it's not too rough and it was really fun overall. I did these very doodly details on top of the watercolors and just really kept this loose and playful style did the clouds on the right side and then a little bit of an underwater, overwater kind of landscape on the left side. And I'm pretty happy with those two, even though they're on the simpler side. Then for the next one, I'm going to use oil pastels. So something completely different. I use a variety of different media in this video, actually. And Paul Rubens actually sent me this set and the white color set. But I have already tried their pastel colors. I bought those in the past and did a video on them. And I kind of accidentally bought the pastel colors. I thought that they were oil pastels in a variety of colors, but I bought pastel oil pastels, if that makes any sense. So I asked Paul Rubens if they could send me their other set. And this is uh, an overview of the colors that are in this set here that I have. And I used that in combination with the pastel colors that I have had for a while. And finally now I can actually do pieces that are not fully pastel because it was really hard to get the pastel colors to really make an impact on a page and it was very limited. I had a lot of fun here combining the two sets, though I have to say I feel like the pastel ones are on the harder side compared to the other ones that are a bit more softer and creamier. I don't know actually which ones I prefer. Both have their ups and downs. The ones that are a little bit on the harder side, they uh, don't smudge too easily and you can get more details with them and they also don't wear down as quickly. But then again, the softer consistency could also be an advantage for blending and stuff. So it really depends. I was just a bit surprised. 
I don't know if that is due to the fact that the pastel colors are a little bit older or it's just a different set. I mean, you can kind of see that the set that I got now has these more pointy edges, so they're kind of sharpened. I guess it's not really sharpened, they were created like that, but they have the more pointy tips and the other ones are just flat, so it seems to be a bit of a different series. But all of that being said, they worked really well together. They complemented each other quite nicely. And the additional white colors are definitely nice. I didn't really use up any white color. I also did another piece with them in the meantime that is not included in this video. And I have barely used the white. But I can only assume that in the long run, having additional white color crayons or pastels will be very handy. You can see that I am working on this surreal landscape here. I did a lot of back and forth with this one. I just drew on, blended that in, then I added more, blended that in, and so on and so forth. That's what I do a lot with this kind of media. I do that with the new colors as well sometimes, where I blend them with water and then add on. And I do that with uh, watercolor markers and with watercolor pencils, any media that can be blended but also can be used as is. I usually do a variety of those techniques just to get all of the effects that you can get with them. And I played around with that a lot in this piece, especially I was using cold press watercolor paper here. I find the rougher paper actually works quite well with them because they have something to stick to. Now that means for me, in my personal opinion, it has to be blended with a blending stamp. You can see me using that here. These are just ones that I still have from Stettler. You could use any blending stumps or any type of tool that would do the trick, probably also your fingers if you don't mind them getting super messy. Now this one had a hole in it. I don't know why. This is one of the sets, one from the set that I've had previously. I don't know what happened there. Uh, just a fun fact here. And also something that I noticed with the new set that I got that I don't know if that's because of the transit and the really hot temperatures when this set arrived, but when I got it, I noticed that maybe a fourth or a third of the colors, maybe more a fourth of the colors, um, they kind of had this oily, waxy sweat on them and I had to remove that with a paper towel and then I let the oil pastel sit in my office for a few days and I do have the AC on every now and then so it doesn't really get that hot in my office and they started to sweat again. So that was really odd for me. They still work just as they should. It doesn't really do anything for them. It doesn't really uh, have any downsides other than being annoying. So that's just something I noticed. So if you have any oil pastels, let me know if that has ever happened to you. I would like to hear that. Is that a thing that happens across all brands or is it just an odd thing? I did ask Paul Rubens and it's not supposed to be something that happens, obviously. It's not supposed to be something that happens often. It's not that big of a deal, they're still usable and you would expect this type of medium to be messy anyways, but I just thought that I would mention that because it was a bit annoying to have to uh, remove the oily stuff on top of the paper that is, is wrapped in. Now you can see that I really played around with all of the blends here and with the sky and those spirals, sort of like an aurora borealis or just something that looks very fantastical and very surreal. I wanted to really uh, combine this color scheme here. I even went ahead and added a bit of green in the sky, which is very rarely a color that you find in the sky. Now, looking back at this, Aurora Borealis is actually green quite, I don't know if it's always green, probably not, but quite often it is 
you can see that it's green. I think that's the only time when the sky is actually green. So it actually kind of fits. But at the time I was like, am I really gonna put green in the sky? But I did it anyways. I wanted the color scheme to look cohesive. I'm glad I did. I am really happy with how this looked in the end. And this was such a fun and playful piece. So I really encourage you to use materials that make you feel more playful, where you can just add stuff, play around with texture and with blending. This is a more messy medium and I'm still trying to figure out how to seal this uh, type of paint. It's not really paint because it doesn't really dry on its own. It will never dry. And so I do have a fixative. We will see if it's gonna hold it. Let me know if you have any suggestions for that as well. Here you can see the finished piece. And like I said, I'm really happy with that one. Now here I'm using the same paper actually. So it is a Hahnemühle cold press 300 GSM paper. It's comparable to an Arches paper as well, I think. And here I am actually transferring a line art from one of the pictures that I took years ago when I visited Barcelona. And I felt really inspired to paint this one. I had put this picture among a few others in my membership, the Cozy Creators Collective. And we have several bundles of reference pictures already. And I used to be a photographer, so I think that the pictures are decent enough to use them as reference pictures. I'm really proud of all of them, actually. All of the ones that I put into the membership are ones that I really, really like myself. And I feel really inspired lately to actually put them into paintings. And with the last art session, the last live session, actually, I combined two different reference pictures that I had in one of the bundles and used that as a starting point. And here I really wanted to have the essence of the building there, but still simplified it quite a bit. I removed a few of those tiny little decor pieces. It is a very intricate building. This is the Hospital de Sant Pau in Barcelona, obviously, and I love all of those buildings there. It is probably the most beautiful architecture that I've seen ever especially in Barcelona. I mean, Barcelona has incredible architecture all around. There's so much to see, but this was probably my favorite. It used to be a hospital and they have this underground network. I don't think you can actually access the underground tunnels, but there used to be the underground tunnels where they would transfer the patients and the doctors would run back and forth and all of the people that worked there. And it's actually quite interesting because all of those buildings, there's a few of those with this sort of style and they aren't really connected on the surface. It looks very um, not like a hospital at all, not in the slightest. And it's just so fun and interesting. I think a few of those buildings, we were able to actually enter into those, but the most uh, interesting part is definitely the architecture from the outside. And so the idea here is to go through your old travel photos and pick something that inspires you, something that you felt like you would always love to paint, but never get around to do that. This is your sign to do that. And if you want to paint this same picture that I painted here, I will put the line art outline sketch in my membership as well. So people can basically use it like a coloring page and just color it in. Then you have a starting point. You don't have to mess around with perspective and it just makes it a lot easier. And I had so much fun with this. And like I've mentioned numerous times before, there is a free trial in my membership membership with no strings attached. If you don't add a payment method, it's just going to expire. And at the point of me recording this, the free trial still exists. I don't know how long I will be doing that, but at this point it's still there. So make sure to check it out. There's literally nothing to lose. There is a lot of classes. I think 
at least 12 or 13 past classes and sessions are in there. Everything has been uploaded and there is a big variety of them as well. Everything is real time. Some of those are recordings from past live streams in good quality though. And some of them are just pre-recorded classes. Some of them focus on color mixing and just gathering ideas and literally all different kinds. There's landscapes, there's creatures, there's uh, everything from composition uh, to lights and shadows. I did an in-depth class about lights and shadows and there's much more coming up. So definitely check it out, uh, especially if you haven't done so already. And you can see the piece coming together. Like I said, I had so much fun with this. I wanted to actually spend even more time on this one that I did. I was considering doing this one for one of the real-time art classes, but I figured that if this was a class that I would talk uh, to about the process while painting, then I would kind of feel pressured to do it quickly. And I really wanted to take my time with this one. I was listening to music and really just uh, having a great time here. I am considering uploading the real-time footage of this as a bonus video in the membership just with music or maybe nothing at all because then you could listen to your own music. But I think the footage is about three hours long. I don't really foresee myself doing a voiceover that's three hours long. So I will have to think about that a little bit, but I do still have the real-time footage at this point. So I might upload it just because I'm really, really proud of how this looks. And also, here I was kind of doing mixed media as well. At first I used uh, Daniel Smith watercolors. I actually only used Daniel Smith. I have a custom watercolor palette that has a bunch of brands in it and everything that is hand poured in that palette, I know that it is from Daniel Smith. And because I thought that this might maybe be hung on the wall at some point, I wanted to use uh, the paints that are the most light fast and the colors that I chose for this are the ones that are more on the light fast side. And then I also used a polychromo colored pencil for more of the line art and all of the fine definitions and Prismacolor colored pencils for more of the texture and shading. Now, I don't know how light fast the Prismacolors are, but frankly, if they fade a little bit, it's not gonna be that big of a deal because the watercolors are still underneath. So I don't really foresee that being that much of a problem, especially since I'm not intending on selling this piece. I'm just probably going to hang it on my own wall somewhere, but I, really went into a flow state with this one so it was really really enjoyable i love all of the colors in real life this building is more on the red orange side but i really felt like doing this pink purple orange theme and i'm glad that i did because i really like how all of these colors look together also with the green tones so this is probably one of my favorites that i've done this year actually now for this next one, the idea is to do this kind of Franken house that is, it has a variety of parts attached to each other. Now I've already done the sketch on almost sort of like a line art off camera here because this one was a little bit... I had to plan that out, let's just say, and I had a really rough sketch version of this in my sort of ugly off-camera sketchbook where I just doodled to find ideas, and I really liked this idea, so I wanted to do this here in this mm, a bit nicer sketchbook. This is the same gray tone sketchbook that we have seen before, and here I was using Hemi gouache, which is not my favorite type of gouache. I just wanted to use it again because I don't use it that much. You can see when you look at the palette, it is a little bit uh, dried up and crumbly. I did add water and let it sit overnight. I could have 
uh, mixed in that water even more to get a nicer consistency. But even if you do, the best you can get with them is being kind of sticky consistency and it's still going to be a bit streaky because you have to add quite a bit of water to be able to get nice and precise lines with it. So what I do to combat that is just frankly doing a lot of layers, which is fine. It's just a lot more tedious. It takes a lot longer to paint something with these. You can get really a nice, nice paintings with these. I have done a few paintings with these over the years and I think I'm happy with all of them for the most part. There's nothing inherently wrong with them. They're a very budget-friendly type of paint. But if you find yourself struggling with gouache and with the consistency, and these are the only gouache paints that you're using, then it might be worth it to try some more high-end brands. It doesn't have to be professional grade, but even one step above these would probably work more nicely, like the Karen Dash ones if you're looking for a palette, or the what I personally have been using most is Winsor & Newton Designer Squash, which is still not the highest end you can get but is a lot more expensive than these obviously also by the way if you are interested in learning about gouache then i highly recommend my course the complete beginner's gouache guide because it has everything you would need to know about gouache literally everything and it compares different types of gouache acrylic gouache traditional gouache there's tutorials there's exercises there's background info everything you need to know about gouache is in that course it is my most in-depth course that i have also the other courses that I have, I will link my website with the courses and also the membership in the description box below. Make sure to check that out because there is a lot that can be learned there and it's going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of struggles and just gonna accelerate your growth when it comes to these types of paints. And the first layers you can see with these are more on the streaky side. Now, since this is still a sketchbook piece and not a finished illustration that's going to end up on the wall, I'm not extremely set on making all of those layers look completely flawless, but I did do quite a lot of fiddling around to make it work. I did a bit of those gradients that you can see appear in different places. And in the end, I also added a lot more details. The ones that you can already see from the line art still peeking through. And I even added more details afterwards. And the line art being there is also one of the reasons why I didn't do thicker layers because I still wanted to be able to see the line art through. That is also one of the reasons why I used, or just the reason why I used a dark colored pencil, a black one for the sketch instead of a lighter pencil. If I were to use water colors I would just use a lighter pencil graphite pencil or something but here I actually used a black colored pencil and it still covered it up in a lot of ways which is to be expected with gouache it is an opaque medium but you can see for example with this light orange middle part here of the house that there is a lot of detail on the house still peeking through the gouache a little bit. And that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to, to I wanted to still see it. Here you can see I'm starting to kind of bring that back, all of that detail. And I was using my tiny nail art brush here, which has the downside that I'm dipping my hand into the paint. A lot of times here. I didn't fully edit the dipping out of this video because this video had 14 hours of just me straight up painting, uh, not including sketching time, planning times, uh, in between times or anything. Just the main painting process itself of this video was 14 hours. 
Uh, I did that on purpose. I did put all of these pieces in here because I wanted a really interesting fast paced video where we can get a lot of ideas. And this is not a step by step tutorial video. Obviously, it's just to get your inspiration flowing and to give you a bunch of ideas of what you can do in your sketchbook or just drawing or painting in general. So uh, it was kind of done on purpose, but I want to know if you like this style of video more or the ones, a uh, few of the ones that I've done recently just had one painting in it. And then I really focus on making all of that look aesthetic and every stroke looks nice. And I edit out those little quirks where I dip my hand into the paint. I mean, I edited it out here a little bit as well just so it doesn't look jarring to watch. I think it's an okay balance. I'm trying to be okay with it since this is sped up a lot. These are sped up uh, up to 10 times original speed. I think everything from um, two times to 10 times speed or even more. No, I think 10 times like if it's a thousand percent speed. No, I just calculated that and if my math is correct, it's actually 100 times speed. That, that is insane. Like everything from 100% speed would be regular and I had everything from uh, 1000 to 10,000 percent sped up here. So this is a really fast paced one, especially compared to the ones that I did recently, but it feels a lot more like the videos that I used to create. But with this one, I'm especially proud with all of the art in here. I like every single piece that I did in this one, which is very rare for a fast paced ideas video like this one. And I hope that it, it, you all like it a lot. But if you want slower videos, there's definitely a lot on my channel. And the real time stuff is in my membership. And my courses are somewhat an, of an in-between. Ha they have real time stuff, but also sped up stuff. Here you can see this finished page spread. It is a very long page spread, but I really enjoyed this format so I actually decided to do this again here and I I don't know I used to here's the sketch for this one I used to really hate having pages where you have to flip the sketchbook or tilt it in a way when, or rotate is the word that I'm looking for when you flip through it you have to rotate it to see those pages but these were really fun those really long uh, pages they're a bit on the harder side to film you can see it slightly um, tilted is that the word it, I the page is not uh, fully in frame if it's completely straight so I had to also move it around a little bit but it's not that bad I think slash hope with this piece here I really liked the idea I think that the format was actually a little bit of disadvantage on this one I wanted it to look super long I liked the idea of that but the idea was that this uh, sort of landscape and this house is coming out of this storybook. Like you're reading the story and then you see that stuff appear. And the book is just too small, I think. It, it doesn't really have this effect anymore as much as I wanted it. I did so many layers with this. This is sped up a lot. Now, this stage here where I added the purple was actually quite nice, but I kept on adding and adding and adding. I am okay with this piece. It is probably my least favorite in this video, but I still like it. I could have picked a color that had a lot more contrast with the greenery for the background, but I wanted a muted color and I wanted to do the quick so I used one of my Artex paint markers here and this was the color that I liked the most for this but in hindsight a different color for more contrast would have been nicer so I might revisit this idea in the future and do it again we will see I really hope that you enjoyed all of those ideas and if you want to see more art ideas then check out this video next